You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, episode 52. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Let's get started. Let's talk about breakthroughs. A breakthrough is a sudden, dramatic, and important discovery or development. I love to think of the example of Archimedes sitting in his bathtub and having that mental breakthrough and shouting, Eureka! Maybe you don't consider your own breakthroughs as academic or historical as a Greek mathematician discovering the displacement of water. I'm guessing your own breakthroughs are more personal to you and less about science and math and the volume of liquid. Some people might think that a breakthrough is only possible if you're already at a low point. For example, once you hit rock bottom, maybe then you're finally ready for a breakthrough. But that's not true at all. I have had so many breakthroughs throughout 2020, and I've been in a pretty consistent pattern of breakthroughs for the past five years. And this didn't come from a low point or from being at rock bottom. My early breakthroughs in recent memory did come while I was feeling pretty stuck and purposeless, but the breakthroughs have kept on coming even when I have been on a consistent high and even as I have been noticing everything working out for me. Today, I'm sharing some breakthroughs that happen as a result of coaching, both self-coaching and working with a coach. In hearing about these examples, Maybe you will achieve a breakthrough of your own right as you're listening, or maybe understanding examples of breakthroughs that other people have had will help loosen up your brain to create space for your own personal breakthroughs. First, I'll share some breakthroughs of my own and then some breakthroughs my clients have experienced through coaching with me. Before I start telling you about my breakthroughs, I want to tell you about a prerequisite that has been helpful for me to achieve breakthroughs and that I sometimes recommend to my clients when I suspect it might be necessary. I don't know if I have a name for this, but in my mind, I always think of it like the star student phenomenon. So I guess I do have a name for it now. The phenomenon I noticed in myself when I first started being coached, and I still see it pop up now sometimes, even years later, and I sometimes see it in my clients, is that the ego will want to be the star student during the coaching call. It will want to give all the correct answers. It will want to prove that I have done the work. It will want to present me and my thoughts in the best possible light. So for the first 20 to 25 minutes of the call, instead of being raw and vulnerable and totally open and honest, I would answer my coach's questions with those quote-unquote right answers or quote-unquote pretty thoughts. (laughs) Finally, around the 30-minute mark of the coaching session, I would realize that I only had a short amount of time left and my real true issue was not being addressed or solved. So then I would let down my guard and say all the oof, ugly, non-flattering thoughts I was actually thinking. And that's when the real coaching could finally begin. And that's when breakthrough was finally possible. This cycle repeated itself every week. Me spending the first half of the call being the star student until I remembered there were no grades and no stars, only coaching and breakthrough, and I would only get those by pushing my ego out of the way and really communicating with my coach. So now I try to be intentional and remind myself going into a coaching session that I can trust my coach to hold space for me and remain neutral with no judgment 
Her only job is to show me what I am thinking. And when I sense one of my clients is giving me all the right answers and telling me what she thinks she should be thinking, not what she's actually thinking, I make sure I am completely neutral and non judgmental and try to get her to open up to the ugly, less than flattering sentences she may sometimes be thinking so that we can examine them. With that prerequisite out of the way, let's talk about the first breakthrough. It comes from answering the prompt, what type of question am I asking myself? Am I asking myself disempowering or empowering questions? This example of a breakthrough demonstrates how we can know of a principle or we can be familiar with it, but not really get it until the conditions are just right. I learned the concept of empowering and disempowering questions years ago before I ever started my path to becoming a coach. I remember thinking it was a helpful concept and it made a lot of sense, and I noticed myself applying the concept on the day after I learned it, but then I haven't made a practice of using this tool and didn't think of it very often. That all changed during one of my own coaching sessions when I was explaining to my coach how I felt so unmotivated and so disinterested in working on things that I had committed to working on. I was being very open and honest and factual about the situation, so it wasn't exactly a case of me not facing my unhelpful thoughts. I was asking myself, why aren't I motivated to do the things I've decided to do? My coach pointed out to me, that I was asking myself a disempowering question, and instead I could ask myself empowering questions. Okay, let's talk about what I mean when I say disempowering and empowering. A disempowering question leads to a dead-end answer. The question doesn't have to be particularly negative in tone, but it sets up the opportunity for disempowering answers. Here's how a disempowering question sounds. Why am I so frustrated about work? The only possible answers would be examples of things that cause frustration and the reminders of the frustrating part of the job. Not very empowering, right? Or why am I not losing weight? All the possible answers to that question point to the reasons that are obstacles to weight loss. Not powerful, actually more of a downer. Empowering questions open up the answers to so many possibilities and solutions. So it would sound like, how can I focus on the positive parts of my job? By giving your brain this empowering question to answer, it goes to work looking for how to focus on the positive. And it notices the positive parts as opposed to the frustrating parts. Another example, how can I lose weight and feel satisfied? When you pose the question that way, your brain sets to work thinking of ways, not obstacles, to lose weight with the added search term of satisfied. So that excludes any solutions that would make you feel deprived. So empowering. In the coaching session when I had this breakthrough, even though I had heard the concept before and used it at least once, my coach noticed I kept bringing up my own growth and learning. She pointed out to me that learning is an important value for me, so she suggested that I ask myself, what do I stand to learn from doing this? Isn't that a brilliant, empowering question? It capitalizes on something that I value, learning. It doesn't require false motivation, and it kept me in a productive mode. What an amazing breakthrough. Recently, I was sharing with my coach how frustrated I had felt the night before about a situation I had created for myself. We talked about identifying the thoughts that created the feeling of frustration, and I agreed and I understood, but I wondered why I wasn't able to approach the situation with that same logic and rationality in the moment like I was able to do during our coaching call. Plus, I worried that I wouldn't be able to think as clearly and respond intentionally if this situation ever came up again. My coach pointed out that I had the option to process the uncomfortable emotion first and only then 
consider the thought that created it. What I had been doing was trying to go straight into changing the thought while I was in the midst of my frustration. Obviously, when I am frustrated, I don't have all my logic and rational skills at my disposal. When I am feeling frustrated, a feeling I don't like or want to feel, my brain thinks something is wrong. It resists the feeling of frustration, and so it immediately tries to solve that frustration. The breakthrough I got on that coaching call, which I'm still practicing and seeing progress on, is that when I notice a feeling that is not my favorite, like irritated, frustrated, guilt, shame, I can allow the feeling instead of resisting it. And once my brain is no longer threatened by the feeling, that's when I have more of my rational abilities to consider the thought creating the irritation, the frustration, or the guilt. Such a helpful breakthrough. Here's a breakthrough I got while doing my own self-coaching as I was journaling one morning. I noticed that plenty of things in my life had come easily to me. I saw how every success, every creation, every accomplishment, everything I've done and achieved and attained had all come to me because of the absence of, or when I finally no longer had any, resistance to it. It was when I just knew it was happening. It was just a matter of time. It was just taking the next step to the next step without questioning, doubting, or resisting. I talked about this a little in the easy versus easy episode. So this breakthrough came for me when I made a list of things in my life that had come relatively easy for me, things I had zero resistance about, my marriage, my friendships, my real estate investing, my education, my finances, my morning routine, even my appearance. I commented or made a little note about each of those things, and I realized, and here's the breakthrough, I can apply those same comments or notes that I have about the easy things in my life to things that I have resistance to. What? Amazing. I can repurpose and recycle my own thoughts to serve me in other areas. And I also described this concept a little in the last best thing episode. Here were some of the thoughts I have about the easy things in my life. I know we're a match. I'm willing to throw money at things I believe in. I know I will finish. This is worthy. I am focused on my goal, meaning I do not entertain distractions. It's part of my identity. I have examples of what I want, and I am willing to move on when it's not right. What powerful and helpful thoughts. Then, I stretched that breakthrough out by asking myself why I didn't think those thoughts about the things I had resistance to. And that really showed me my thinking. Wow! Those were just a few examples of my own breakthroughs, and now I'll tell you some slightly altered for anonymity examples of my clients' breakthroughs. Staying on that last example I just gave about noticing the thoughts about things that come easy, I used the same coaching exercise with a client who felt really confident in one area of her life, but unworthy in another area of her life. So I had her tell me the thoughts that she had about her confident area, and then We noticed how she could apply those same true statements about herself to the area where she felt unworthy. It was so powerful to see the breakthrough crack open her brain right in the coaching session. Her whole demeanor changed. That awareness that came from her own words, her own thoughts, had ripple effects in the coming months for her in multiple areas of her life. What a beautiful breakthrough. I have another client who's working on her relationship status. She wants to be in a relationship, and she's currently not. So she is considering online dating, even though she doesn't like online dating. She thinks it's a lot of work. It just is, right? That's just a fact. Well, that's what she thinks. (laughs) So when she thinks something is a lot of work and not very enjoyable work, how does she feel? She feels 
drained before she even opens the app. She thinks of it as a chore, as something she has to do but doesn't want to do. She puts off doing it. She tells herself she would just rather not date if it means that she has to do all that work. And I just want to point out this thought, that's a lot of work, that creates that drained feeling resulting in procrastination or even complete avoidance applies to a lot of different things, not just the online dating. It can come up for people who, for example, are job searching and think that way about looking at job postings and filling out online job applications. I heard a slight variation for the job search example as, the job market is brutal right now. Here's the breakthrough for those clients. Those thoughts, it's a lot of work and the brutal job market, are completely optional. They were thinking those thoughts and believing them and not questioning them and letting those thoughts make decisions about their relationships and their careers, not realizing that the thoughts were not helpful and also completely optional. When we dug a little deeper and looked at all the possibilities, the dating client realized online dating was actually pretty efficient and a lot less work than so many of the other ways to meet people. And she also realized that she had been adding so many steps and expectations for herself about how she would use the dating app, which weren't necessary at all. So this breakthrough may not seem new or exciting, but here it is again. The thoughts you think right now, all of them, are completely optional. If they help you feel how you want to feel and do what you want to do, keep thinking them. But if they make you avoid and complain and do the opposite of what you actually want, drop those thoughts. (laughs) When the dating client dropped that optional unhelpful thought, within a week, she had created her online profile. And on our next coaching call, she told me she had a date the coming weekend. Amazing breakthrough. The last breakthrough I want to share with you is from a client who is already in a relationship. She was telling me how disappointed she was about her partner and a few other members of her family because of what they weren't doing and what they weren't saying. And I asked her, who's responsible for meeting your needs? She started to continue to talk about her expectations for her partner and her sister, and I interrupted and suggested, and here's the breakthrough, You are the only one responsible for meeting your own needs. That stopped her for a moment, and she didn't agree at first, but then the realization came. She was totally liberated when she realized if she took responsibility for her own happiness and feeling loved and appreciated and accepted, she could feel powerful instead of powerless when she thought others didn't love her or didn't appreciate her, when she provided herself with acceptance and care and respect, regardless of what other people said or did, she could just love them and enjoy their company unconditionally. Her love for them did not depend on them saying or doing anything. That was a true breakthrough. So to wrap up, If you think of your resistance like a wall or a barrier or an obstacle to you getting what you really want, or even just something that would be nice to have or better for you, notice that you can use the examples I just gave you to literally break through your own resistance. Isn't that fun and liberating to think about? You can break through. That's your breakthrough. What do you think? Can you imagine yourself breaking through your resistance? Do you have any resistance to the breakthroughs that I described? What breakthroughs have you experienced in your life? Let me know. Send me an email at hi at bexby.org or leave a comment in the show notes for this episode at bexby.org slash coaching breakthrough. If this resonated with you or if this brings up more questions, I invite you to schedule a coaching call with me to find out what breakthroughs are waiting for you. Go to bexb.org and look for the link in the top right corner that says, 
work with me to find out more. If you are one of my favorite people, this week I sent you a list of breakthrough prompts in your email along with this episode. You can use these prompts in your journaling or as a personal growth exercise, or it might be interesting to use these questions with a friend or partner or even a coach to get some interesting insight. And if you want that list of questions and you're not on my email list yet, go to bexby.org slash favorites so I can send you the workbook of all the worksheets, activities, exercises, and all the fun extras that I send out to my favorite people. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you in seven days. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you're subscribed and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Also, think about someone who you know who would love this episode and share it with them. There should be a share button on your app if you're listening to this on your phone. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexbead.org to see how we can work together. 